What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade but today once again we are going to be discussing near-death experiences. As promised when I put out the video about near-death experiences of hell here is one of near-death experiences of heaven. Many of you told me how excited you were to see this one when I put the other one out so I figured I would do it right away. So I just want to quickly say this and I know we don't really have to because 99.99% .99 of you are my subscribers, my friends, my family, all of the above, right? So I'm not talking about the people who regularly comment on my videos, but for trolls or the people who are just a bit fanatical or people who just don't like me in general and want to stir up some trouble, please do not mistake this video or anything I say in it as an invitation to come into the comments and start preaching, belittling, judging, shaming, hating on, etc anyone else in the comment section. I'm not worried about those of you, the majority of you, like I said, who are my peoples, but the less than 1% who either can't stand me or just have nothing better to do than hurt other people. Because as you guys always tell me, hurt people hurt people. Take it somewhere else. This is kind of a lighthearted video I'm excited about. Since we talk so much about the heavy and evil and darkness, it's nice to be able to lighten up both literally and figuratively, pun intended, right? So yeah, remember too that no two near-death experiences are ever going to be exactly the same. And like I always say, our experiences are going to shape our ideas. So if you've had a near-death experience that sounds nothing like this, don't worry. And also send that in to me, please. It's a deeply personal experience and depends on so many different factors. So without further ado, here are the 10 most commonly reported experiences of a near-death experience of heaven. Number 10 is the light at the end of the tunnel. And though this is one of the first things I think most of us, myself included, think of right away when thinking about what happens immediately after we die, when we are about to go to heaven, it's actually the least commonly reported experience on our list. I mean, I always think about the light at the end of the tunnel, the bright light, go into the light, right? Step into the light. Not only is it the least commonly reported thing, it varies greatly in how people experience it as well. Only 42% of people reported seeing a tunnel with the light at the end of it. Similar experiences included seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but rushing very fast toward it without even trying and moving at an inhumanly fast speed up a staircase or through some other sort of passageway to get to the tunnel. And then I often wonder too, like, what about psychics and mediums? And I'm nowhere near here yet where I would know the answer to this, even though I am working on my psychic senses and honing all of that, as you guys know. What about the spirits that don't go into the light and we try to help them by telling them to go into the light? If they're so fast rushing towards this, they really don't have a choice. So I wonder why some people are given a choice and some aren't. Number nine is being shown the future. In 44% of cases of near-death experiences and experiences of heaven in the afterlife, people reported to have been shown the future or at least they were given knowledge of future events or some future event. Some were specific to the person and some were general future knowledge of like world events or country events. It varied greatly again from person to person as some were told to keep the information to themselves and others were told to make sure they spread the word. Sometimes the information was given in such a way that it made absolutely no sense to the experiencer until years and years later when the event finally happened and they realized that they had known about it somehow like subconsciously and they just didn't figure it out. That may not make much sense, but it's hard to explain these things sometimes, and I'm doing my best. Many of them even claimed that the future knowledge they were given directly affected whether or not they chose to return here to Earth. So they would be told, yeah, you can stay in heaven, but if you go back, you can help so-and-so with this. And if you don't help them with that, this is what's going to happen, something like that. Does that make sense? Number eight was it wasn't their time. Just about 45% of people reported having been sent back after first being told it isn't their time yet. Most of them, more than half actually, reported they weren't giving a choice, but a small percentage said it was their decision to make, but they were told it wasn't their time and they had much more to accomplish and or learn here on earth and chose to come back of their own accord. Many of the latter admit that despite being told they had more to do here, they were extremely reluctant to make the choice to return. And 
While they weren't forced, they felt they were being convinced somehow to come back by the otherworldly and possibly angelic beings who were giving them their heavenly tour. Those who were specifically told they had unfinished business were mainly the ones who had their choice made for them by these celestial beings or celestial creatures. An even smaller percentage of this 45% were told they already have or were given some mission to complete. So they were told they already have some mission that they have to go back or they were told you have to do this. I'm unsure how that works or what some examples of these missions were, but if you're interested, let me know and I'm sure I can find some and present them to you all in a future video. This could end up being a very long and pretty wide ranging series if you guys are interested. So as always, let me know in the comments. Number seven is different levels of the afterlife. I think I mentioned this in the last video I did of the hell experiences where I explained that in my opinion, there were different layers to or realms of hell. Also, there was a kind of waiting area as well. And remember, this was my opinion. I don't want to be repetitive, but this is kind of important. I don't believe in a quote unquote purgatory like a lot of Catholics tend to believe in and I'm sure other religions as well. I do, however, believe that there is a place where people who have committed some terrible sins yet have truly repented for them and perhaps didn't have enough time to make up for them with actions while here in life go to carry kind of carry out a sentence of sorts. I'm not saying you get to heaven by works, so that's not what I'm saying. I'm walking a little bit on eggshells here, so just go with it. This waiting area or having the different levels to heaven and hell was actually reported quite a lot. And I'm actually going to be doing another video on it of the top 10 classic experiences of someone who died and claimed to have went to purgatory or some kind of waiting or holding area. And that's coming soon. So anyway, 46% of experiencers claim to either have been made aware somehow that different levels of heaven or even different realms, including that was one that was full of anguish, which many of them actually thought was some sort of hell inside of heaven existed. Some even claim to have experienced this realm or waiting area personally while they were there. They said they were quickly brought out of it and brought to the more conventional heaven we all have come to kind of think of when thinking of the afterlife and what's up, right? This brings me to my point. I believe now after seeing this, that perhaps this is the purgatory type place I mentioned in the last video. I had speculated maybe it was some kind of outer circle of hell that Satan kind of leaves alone because these people and Satan himself know that God is eventually coming for them. But I think, may, I think now that maybe that's what this is. Eventually the souls are allowed into heaven and know the whole while they'll eventually be getting there unlike those souls in hell who were condemned and damned and are sentenced to an eternity there without God and therefore without peace. Number six is unlimited knowledge. Now, this one may be a little tricky to understand, so I'll try and explain it as best I can. 46% of people reported knowing with absolute certainty that they were somehow in the presence of absolute and total knowledge. All of life's little unanswered questions, quote unquote, were now answered. Is it weird that I often wonder if I'll still really want to know what happened in certain unsolved cases that haunt not only me, but many other people in this community? Like, I want to know what happened to baby Dior Kuntz and John Benet Ramsey, okay? Among many others, obviously, but moving on. Anyways, a smaller percentage of people, but not smaller by much, also reported that it was like all of the knowledge of the entire universe was somehow known to or shared with them all at once, regardless of how long they were in heaven for. So even those that were there for like just a couple of seconds, the problem with this though, pretty much none of them were able to retain this knowledge once they were brought back to life and woken up. Some people have reported gaining psychic powers or strange knowledge upon returning from an NDE, both heaven and hell, but that's actually going to be one of the next videos in this series as well. So stay tuned and that's going to be however many people are just people who have died and claim to have gone to heaven or hell and come back with psychic knowledge, psychic powers. Even though these people who gained this knowledge weren't allowed to or couldn't maintain it while here on earth, they were left with the fact that it does exist and they will have access to it once they die for real this time and go back to heaven. Number five is immense bliss or euphoria. 
We are at the fifth and halfway point here for our 10 most commonly reported experiences of heaven from people who have had NDEs and came back. Immense, intense bliss and euphoria was reported by 55% of people who shared their experience. So this is actually pretty awesome because unlike the NDEs of hell I brought you last time, these things are almost always reported together. Maybe not every single one of them, but this one and one very similar to this one we come upon at number one. These two together, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we get there, has got to be the absolute most incredible, indescribable even, feelings anyone could ever experience. Something none of us could ever possibly experience, in my opinion, probably not even while under the influence of the best and most calm euphoria and or happiness producing drugs on the market, pharmaceutical or streets. I mean, that's how incredible this all must feel. I don't think we are capable of feeling it as humans, maybe only as spirit or soul, however you want to think of it. I don't think it's an earthly feeling like that's how intense and immense this is. This is most likely why so many people report they don't want to come back despite being told it wasn't their time and even in some cases despite knowing they had unfinished business or loved ones who really needed them for one reason or, reason or another here on earth still. Ugh, I get chills because I just can't wait. Remember, there are no earthly troubles, no body making you sick or weak or slowing you down in any way. It's got to be truly divine in the purest sense of the word. Number four is God. 56% of people also reported meeting a being they believe to be God himself or some other divine being, I suppose, depending upon your religion. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm a Christian. This one was a little hard for me personally because I don't accept personally me, myself, Gemma, doesn't accept that there are any other gods besides our one and only maker but I don't judge people who believe differently and it's all just so unknown you know it's unknown isn't it who knows if it's all the same God possibly the Christian one or perhaps even a different divine being altogether but he or she just chooses to appear before you in the form of the creator that you believed in while you were here on earth right does that make sense I know I say that a lot but it's hard for me to explain this and like I said it's kind of like walking on eggshells because I want you all to know that I respect all of your beliefs, your opinions, your theories, anything that you think, the religion you practice. Um, I'm not in any way trying to mock or go against it. But 56% of people said that they saw God or meeting a being they believe to be God himself or some other divine being. We just don't know. And this is personally my favorite part and the thing I'm most jealous of. I think I mentioned this in the first near-death experience video concerning people who have been able to get a glimpse of heaven is meeting Jesus, meeting Jesus Christ. For me, that's what it's all about. And while I by no means want to die and never come back, my life is far too good right now for any of that. And while I know I will meet him one day, because as I also said, my repentance and conversion were both real. And I'm satisfied that I'm going to heaven when I die without a doubt, whatever that looks like. But it's like, man, like, if I can only meet him for just one minute, Jesus for me is the true and original rock star. Turning water into fun. <laughs> Sorry, I never could resist the chance to throw in a Family Guy or American Dad reference, so whatever. Oh, and get this, while 56% of people reported seeing God or some other divine being, a whopping 75% of atheists who have gone and went to heaven reported seeing the same. They reported seeing God or another divine figure. Whoopsie! Number three is life review. In 62% of cases where people reported a near-death experience of heaven, there's that sometimes dreaded life review. The process of the life review varies greatly depending on the person and their own personal encounter, but however the review is done, it's done quite often. For example, some people saw their whole lives in reverse while some saw it chronologically from birth to death. Still, some people reported it as feeling and or experiencing every single second of their entire lives, while others reported it more as seeing and feeling just the highlights, right? While I used to think this was really scary, I mean, reviewing my life in the presence of heavenly beings and maybe even God himself or Jesus, my idol, right? It's absolutely terrifying, or at least it used to be for me. But then I was like, if I'm already in heaven when this happens, so I don't think 
this is the same as what we have to review and experience while facing our judgment, which is something completely different. We're allegedly, we're made to feel all of the pain and hurt we made others feel in our whole lives. If we are already in heaven, then I'm sure there's a reason for this. I'm not sure what it is, however, but have so much more info on NDEs to come in the future. Hopefully I can come up with some kind of answer that we can at least accept or reconcile ourselves to. Number two is the ability to communicate telepathically. The ability to communicate with who or whatever we run into up there with just our minds is also an extremely common thing with 65% of people who have had a heaven NDE saying this was the case. They didn't have to use their mouths or any words at all. It wasn't just for when they were communicating with spirits who were once human either, like lost loved ones who they definitely ran into up there. It was the same when dealing with the other heavenly entities such as angels or any other beings one might see during a heavenly death experience, near death experience. This must be so wonderful, right? What I'm wondering though is since everyone in heaven can seemingly communicate using mental telepathy, does that mean that even your innermost thoughts are on display for everyone to hear? Maybe there's some kind of distinction made for your thoughts you're trying to convey and the ones you want to keep to yourself. Then again, I think it's different too for those of us who aren't sent back. That is the people who actually die and lose their humanity than for those of us who are taking a trip to heaven while still holding on to our humanity because God or whoever you think rules the heaven you're in surely knows it isn't your time and your soul is allowed to keep the barrier of a body and return here to earth. So maybe the telepathy or how you communicate up there is different when you're actually crossed over for good is pretty much what I'm trying to say. But of course I'm so verbose and I just ramble. It's probably different for the people who pass away and stay deceased because they then shed their mortal body and become spirit. And spirit, I believe, communicates differently as well. Number one, an overwhelming sense of peace and love. Now I know what you're thinking because I thought at first too, when I saw this, I thought how familiar it sounded and like exactly the same thing as number five on our list, which was tremendous bliss and euphoria. However, upon looking just a little further, I realized that while number five came from within ourselves, this one comes from some kind of as yet not understood or determined external force while we're in heaven. So there's the difference. Also notice I didn't say an overwhelming feeling of peace and love, but a sense of peace and love. This is because though ever present in almost 70% of all reported near death experiences of heaven, it's very nonspecific, meaning it's coming from everywhere and nowhere all at once. It actually seems to just be a part of the atmosphere up there. Sometimes the feelings are emanating from a religious figure like God or Jesus and other times there's a nondescript and unknown beings who are putting these energies out there and other times as I just said it's a part of the place a part of the energy there. This overwhelming and often indescribable peace and love is something that many people say makes them not want to leave once they feel it and though they can never replicate it here on earth they are never able to forget it and therefore look so forward to being able to feel it again. This is a good thing because perhaps they will keep up the life they are living, which is one that's obviously worthy of heaven when they pass away. Keep in mind these feelings in heaven are nothing like what they are and feel like here on earth. They're not even close. These feelings are wonderful to feel while here, don't get me wrong, but they are fleeting most times as nobody feels like this forever while you're alive. This amazing love and peace. Even if we do on a much smaller scale here and for a very short time in heaven, though, these glorious and wonderful feelings are eternal. So while we obviously can never know for sure if these are actual experiences of heaven or even hell or the waiting place purgatory, right? I'm definitely a believer in these experiences for sure. It's a debate probably as old as time itself. And I will say though, that for the people who have had these experiences, there is no convincing them that what they experienced and or encountered was not real once they came back and told their stories. Also, people who didn't believe in such things as heaven or hell or any kind of afterlife in general were absolutely convinced differently after having had these experiences. So what do you guys think? Like I said, I don't want to start a religious debate, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Please always be respectful of other people. That's all I have for you today, guys. Please be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed spending this time with me and hanging out with me and discussing this, this is only part three of a series that's probably going to have about 10 different videos. So I hope you guys are hanging on. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know. 
Also, make sure your like sticks. Um, I don't really know how to explain that except people said they were liking the video and then if they like watched only halfway and came back, the like was gone. So check that out. Make sure your notification bell is on. Check out the description box for some important links. Justice for Caleb Smith. Check out the two hour live interview that Steve Stockton and I did with Caleb Smith's mother, April Arrington. Subscribe over there if you haven't already. Like that video, leave a comment. Let's show Caleb Smith's family some love. Let's try to get him some justice. Also, Sunday night fireside chats with me and Steve Stockton. The link will be there for that. Wednesday nights on DeZombified's channel from 8 to 9 Eastern time with me and Steve Stockton doing Real Evil. And Friday nights campfire stories on missing persons and mysteries from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time with me and Steve Stockton. Also links for Patreon and PayPal to donate to the channel. Guys, be kind to each other. It doesn't cost anything and can make you feel so good. Smile at a stranger. Always go in grace. Have your best day. Have your best night. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Guys, this is Editing Gemma. I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you to please... If you have any paranormal encounters or experiences with the supernatural, the paranormal, any short stories, anything you want me to read on air and make a part of our subscriber encounters, listener stories, series, I'm doing them as they come up. It could be weekly. It could be monthly. However much you guys send in is how much I'm going to put out because I really love doing them. So please send them to GemmaJadeParanormal at gmail.com. If you already sent them to GemmaJadeYT, that's fine. I realized how to get in there, but please send them from here on out to Gemma Jade Paranormal. All right. I'll let you guys go now. Love you so much. Bye-bye.